Hello, welcome back uh, to Sterling Armory for part two of our video series on how we make our blades. In the last video, in the first video we did actually, we talked about how we start with our 2D cuts based on templates uh, from historical pieces that we've studied. And now we're going to go uh, a bit further to see what we do with those templates once they're cut. However, one thing I forgot to show last time uh, was what is our goal here. So uh, we had our our 2D cut last time, this is where we stopped. So 5160 bar stock uh, steel cut to a 2D shape, pretty simple, uh, cut on our bandsaw. But our final product is uh, here. So this is my personal uh, longsword, and it started as the same template. So the series we're gonna be covering goes from how we go uh, from the template uh, and the base all the way to the finished piece. So we'll be covering this uh, in a series of videos. Um, so, what's next? So heat treatment. So we differ from uh, from a lot of other companies in this next step. And it's not better or worse, it's just a different way to do it. Uh, so what we do is right from our templates, uh, we take all of our, our pieces that are cut, all of our blades, we have a bunch on the floor here behind me, um, if you can see them. And they all go together in a one bulk heat treatment, and that's uh, that's actually going to be happening soon for us for this next batch. But in the overall process, <clears throat> we basically take our blade templates and oop, don't fall over, <laughs> and we heat treat them as is. Now there's uh, many reasons that you would want to wait for heat treat because um, once you heat treat this, it's going to be harder to grind. It's going to be harder uh, to machine or do anything with it. Um, however, the reason why we do heat treat now uh, and not wait till later is overall speed of the process, overall efficiency of the process, uh, and the ability to minimize uh, twisting and warping in heat treat. Um, so normally when you heat treat, back when, again, when I started about 20 years ago or so, you know, you have your, uh, your coal or propane forge and your, your, oil, your oil bats that's if I can talk right, um, that you're going to be quenching it. And so when you do your quench, uh, when the blade's still hot after the quench, you're able to uh, straighten it out. Uh, you have a few minutes there, or a few moments I should say, to straighten the blade out and ensure that it's good before you let it fully cool. When you're doing a bulk heat treating of a lot of blades, uh, you can't. there's no time to do that. You can't do it. So what do we do to avoid that? <clears throat> and just so you know, um, if we don't take any precautions and we just go right into heat treat and we heat treat a bunch of blades and we get them back, this is what happens. So this is an older blade that, <clears throat> it's actually a, a two-ended messer. Um, and this blade went in with no fixturing or there's right in the quench and temper uh, in the bulk heat treat. And what you can see, I think you can see it, is it warps drastically. So I don't know if you can see that there, the camera's picking it up. Now this blade, because the warp is in the two to in the plane of the blade, I, I can fix it, but it's not preferred. So we want to figure out how to heat treat the blades without having them warp like crazy. And anytime you have a very long piece of steel that's very relatively thin to its length, it's going to warp and heat treat, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> so, so how do you fix it, right? Or how do you correct for it? So what we do here is we build uh, fixtures for each individual blade. So this is a Type 15 blade that's going to heat treat soon. And the fixture that it has is right here. And these fixtures are quite heavy. We, uh, we build up and weld up our own fixtures per blade. So we have one of these for every blade design that we have. And the, once the blades go in a quench, when they come out of quench, then they get pressed back into these fixtures to kind of force them back into the shape that they were. And then, uh, then they sit in the temper phase and heat treat for two to, th two to four hours, depending on the process. And uh, they come out, oops, stay, <laughs> they come out uh, relatively straight. Are they always perfect? No, it's not 100%, but for the most part. Which brings me back to why we heat treat at this particular phase. So leaving the blades a little thicker, if there is a slight warpage, um, and it's very minimal, when you're going to the grind, which will be our next few steps that we're going to cover, uh, you can actually grind out the, any errors or any warpage in the blade uh, if you have enough meat to start with. So yeah, that's the heat treat. And uh, oh, 
uh, I forgot to mention. So we do our heat treatment. Again, I used to do everything in-house, but the, our bulk heat treatments, our big heat treatments, are done through uh, Braddock Metallurgical, which is a local heat treating company. And uh, they usually do nuts and bolts and saw blades all day long, normal stuff. Uh, so when they get sword blades in, they love it. Uh, they have fun with the sword blades. They run around the shop with them, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so uh, that's it for heat treat. That's the next step in our process. Uh, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I think that's it. Uh, the next few steps we're going to cover, we'll go into uh, where we go after we have a heat treated blank. So uh, lots of grinding, lots of fun stuff coming up. It's going to be a little bit more fun of a video. Okay, uh, any questions, please leave any comments below, and hopefully uh, I didn't run too long. What am I at right now? Just about five minutes, or a little over five minutes, so thanks.